Yeah. How's everybody doing today? It's the uh, it's the Earl with Adirondack Native Historic Preservation down at Fort Miller today. Uh, that's two this week. That's awesome. So Fort Miller, closely associated French and Indian War, American Revolution, Fort Edward, um, the Military Road. We believe Fort uh, Route Four, which is right here, um, was the old Military Road part of it. Asia Fitch and A Asia Fitch, Fitch his work F I T C H. It illustrates the military road dirt path from Albany to Canada during the Queen's Anne War, 1702 to 1713, which lasted until the American Revolution. Traversing the route was very time-consuming, difficult, and to say the least, formidable. Yet between 1700 and the late 1780s, several Mohawk Indian and other regional tribes, along with British troops, and I would like to even propose French troops, made the long journey. Soon after, it became known as the, the Great Carrying Place, which entailed Fort Edward and nearby Fort Miller, in my opinion. Fitch writes in support of this. Several portages obtained distinctive names, were designated by number. Fort Miller and Fort Miller Falls was the second. Fitch writes again regarding the huge land grants and patents that were given out after the American Revolution. Um, during the time period, including Fort Miller, Schuyler's pet, uh, patent containing 12,000 acres formed the chief part uh, of the present town of Fort Edward. Granted July 18th, July 18, 1740 to John and Philip Schuyler and four other men. Fitch goes on to write, a small fortification, which was named Fort Miller, uh, mil was a military structure along the Hudson. Uh, it was a detachment for the army, storehouse, storehouses protected by blockhouses and other defenses, and was maintained uh, at the other carrying place up the road, which we know would have been Fort, uh, Fort Edward. Colonel Miller, who the fort was named after, uh, Fort Miller was was very few places in the country that retained the original name given to it. So it retained its original name. An observation. Uh, regarding, Fitch, regarding Fitch's work, Fitch had, a, Fitch had a way of bringing you in your mind's eye to a place that by 1777 that would shape the nation's history and the fate of various people involved. What Fitch, what Fitch either chose to do or by mistake omit was leaving out his own personal uh, bias toward Native Indian people, more specifically the Mohawk. But why? Men like Finch were well-educated, socially established, and connected, obviously accepted authors, and which communicated their craft to a heightened precision. <laughs> Fitch was not alone. During the time period earlier, men like James Fenimore Cooper and several others within that time period would help to create a narr narrative dedicated to showing all Native Indian people, not, not all Native Indians, as gruesome, bloodthirsty savages. The truth was, these Native Indian people were acting to defend their families, small communities, way of life, food sources, and other vital aspects that help them live day by day. Not much different than today, twenty in the 21st century. By 1775, 1775 the British forces, and, and French as well too, had killed thousands purchased small and then purchased small or before it, it, it kind of goes in hand in hand they had killed thousands of native indians but also purchased uh with small amounts of uh, money with funds huge sections of native territory and new york state was in their crosshairs ohio valley beginning of the french and indian war uh, there's several different references by the late 1780s 
which became known as the Sullivan Clinton campaign, which we will probably do a documentary on later. Later, Sullivan Clinton campaign was against the Mohawk Indian and the Iroquois nation as a whole. <sighs> they had either the British and the Americans under Washington, unfortunately, at that time period, had killed off Mohawk Indians, thousands of them, and forced and forced them to leave what they had spent centuries building and establishing. Sorry. <laughs> Chris Field Johnson. Work. Oh, excuse me again. Chris Field Johnson's work and book begins his discussion on Fort Miller in 1790. By July, General Fitz J. Winthrop had been selected as commanding officer along with Major Peter Schuyler. Not longer after that, they had marched to Albany and reached Albany with a group of Allied militia. Winthrop and Schuyler's men would reach Fort Miller by the end of July. In August of the same year, an additional 530 soldiers along with 150 native Mohawk Indians were preparing for the forthcoming mission, forthcoming mission into Canada. Uh, when they came to La Prairie, Canada, the men encountered enemy forces, killing about 300 of them. Winthrop and Schuyler's men only lost about 20. However, much like in Fitch's work, Chris Field Johnson also could not escape the established pre-justice dedicated to Native Indian people as a whole. You can see several different accounts of this, several different references within his book, and uh, I will include them in the details or the description of the page. Fred Anderson's book, Crucible of War, which I use a lot, You'll see Map 4, which entails New England, New France, Lake Champlain, and Hudson Corridor. If you look closely, Fort Miller is on the map. Anderson goes on to uh, talk about the Iroquois Confederacy inception and some of their downfall within the area of 1450 through 1735. During this period, three major wars were, were raged. Uh, King William's, Queen Anne, and King George's War were in one way or another very important to the colonists of England and France and the 12 colonies here in America, or 13 colonies. Darren Bonaparte, a full-blooded Mohawk Indian, writes several different uh, comprehensive, uh, not only books, but just detailed information about the Mohawk people. It goes on to write... Uh, when, ho when hostilities between the French and British resumed in 1755, now we're talking about the French and Indian War, uh, the Canadian warriors uh, were, called, were called upon to assist the French allies. And one native Indian warrior named Colonel Lewis Cook was among them. The Seven Years' War brought Mohawk of the St. Uh, Lawrence Valley against those of their own homeland. The two groups were reluctant to fight against each other but by the time it was older, over, we, we've already covered some of this. During the Battle of Lake George, um, many were killed and many uh, Native Indians fought against each other. Bonaparte does not mention by name Fort Miller here in a section of his writing. But we know from Fred Anderson, uh, Fitch's and Johnson's work, Chris, uh, Chris Field Johnson's work, which we just got done talk, talking about, and Dean Snow's work on the Iroquois, British troops were stationed at Fort Edward during the time frame and during the Battle of Lake George. It would be safe to suggest Fort Miller housed at least some of these soldiers preparing to fight the French, in my opinion. Further support of this, can be seen in Bonaparte's writing during the Battle of Lake George, the Bloody Morning Scout. We've already talked about that. In the real battle, there were some 300 Mohawk Indians led by an elderly chief named King Hendrick. 
They were at the head of the colonial militia searching for French soldiers. Canadian militia and their native allies were in the woods near southern end of Lake George, New York. In Lakes to Locks Passages work, the hamlet of Fort Miller is named for the fort built on the west side of the Hudson River by the British during the French and Indian War. Uh, known as the Little Carrion Place, Fort Miller was not much more than a protected storehouse strategically lo located between Saratoga and Fort Edward. Here, a waterfall impeded river traffic, uh, forcing travelers to carry their boats and supplies around the falls by land. Despite the significant changes to the landscape, there is still evidence of the past. If you stand at the Fort Miller and Little Carrion Place historic marker, this is the marker right here, and look uh, at the Junting Peninsula on the opposite side of the Hudson River, you'll notice a steep incline that tr that levels at the surface. This is the part of the uh, art artificial slope used for breastworks for this fortification and protections, which surrounded the, the old fort, the old French and Indian War era fortification. They found the fort ruins during the summer of 1777. Uh, Frederick Baham, B-A-U-M, B -A -U -M, I'm sorry, I'm killing his name, um, 